scripture is this. Every time, it, okay, it talks about the anointing and never talks about power. Every time it talks about power, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon them. There's a difference. You're anointed into position, but then the spirit of the Lord has come upon you to empower you with his spirit so that you can do whatever God wants done at the time. Do you get that? Now, that's called the new birth and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Whenever you became a child of God, and we'll look at these scriptures more later, but when you became a child of God, you were anointed into position as a son. Because you're a son, according to Galatians chapter 4, because you're a son, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So because you're a son, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord came upon you. You're a son, and then the spirit of power, the spirit came with power upon you that allowed you to act like a son. So the anointing has no power in it, when we, and yet we use it all the time. Oh, it's the anointing. Oh, this is the anointing. Oh, they're so anointed. Oh, this is an... No. All you're saying is they're put into a position. That's what anoint means. But understand, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, that's when power is present. And the thing is, he comes upon us and he stays. In the Old Testament, he would come and go, come and go, come and go. In the New Testament, he comes and stays. Now, the problem is, because we have an old covenant mindset, we're still trying to be led by our carnal nature and feel things, and so we wait till we feel something to think he's there. And in reality, he's sitting there the whole time twiddling his thumb saying, come on, let me out, let me out, let me out. And yet we don't let him out because we don't feel anything. And that's because God wants us to walk by faith. Now, what that means is this. Jesus never felt anything when he was ministering. There's only one mention of him feeling anything, and that was when the woman pulled it out of him. Why? Because you can't feel power like he did and like people do when they're ministering. You can't feel the amount of power they, that, that is going through you. If you did, you'd fall out. So instead, you have to carry that power and know by faith that you can release that power at will because your will has become God's will. We could even turn around and say God's will has become your will. Why? Because we have to realize he gave us the mind of Christ and he wants our will submitted to him. Now, here's the problem. If you're still in sin, if you are still sinning, on a regular basis. You won't be available when it's time to use the power because your own conscience will condemn you. Because the minute you think you should do something, guess what? The devil will go, what about this? What about that? What, what, what about when you did this? And you'll, you'll back down. And so let me tell you, when you get rid of sin and you can, right? When you get rid of sin... You don't have to think much about boldness. It'll be there. You understand? That's why many times when I see people that are timid, because we've not been given a spirit of timidity or fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. When I see timid people, I know one of two things. I have to, they are sent to me to develop them and help build them into an image and a replica of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Or I know they are steeped in sin and don't want out. You say, well, but I'm in sin, but I, but I want out. No, you don't. When you want out, you'll stop. It's that simple. Don't tell me you can't. I'm telling you. Whenever you're free of sin, everything changes. And so, anyway, we've got to stop.